We are less than one week away from setting sail on our Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down every activity that we have planned so far for this vacation. We're gonna be giving you guys a list of excursions, the cost breakdown, and so much more up next. <laughs> What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. As I said earlier, we are less than a week away from our Alaskan cruise line vacation. And with this being my girlfriend Coda's first time going to Alaska, I wanted to make sure that we did this cruise bigger and better than ever. So with that in mind, we wanted to make sure that we had more excursions and activities booked for this vacation compared to our last one. We're going to be breaking down what we have planned for not only Vancouver, but for every individual day of our cruise as well. Before we get into it guys, I just want to say that this is my second time trying to record this video I tried to record it earlier today and the video file got corrupted so if you enjoy any bit of today's video or you find any of the information given to you guys today helpful in any way shape or form please help me out by leaving a like on the video it will greatly help us out and if you want to see more content like this in the future and vlogs from our upcoming Alaskan cruise you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel for absolutely free but with all that out of the way guys let's go ahead and get into the video what do we have planned for Vancouver and our Alaskan cruise so our Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation starts on Monday, June 5th, and we are going to be flying in that Saturday on June 3rd. Now, I've said this before in multiple videos. If you guys are flying in from out of states for your cruise line vacation, I recommend you fly in at least one day before your embarkation day. So if your cruise departs on a Monday, I highly recommend flying in on at least Sunday because me, Coda, and my mom live on the literal opposite side of the North American continent. We're going to go ahead and go the extra mile and fly in on Saturday. We are going to be flying in pretty late on Saturday, so as of right now, we don't have anything planned for a Saturday, but Sunday is when the fun actually begins. So on Sunday, we are going to be checking in to the coveted Pan Pacific Hotel. Now, if you guys have done any research on any Alaskan cruise vacation that departs out of Vancouver, everybody and their grandmothers is going to tell you that you have to stay at the Pan Pacific Hotel. Now, me personally, we have never stayed at the Pan Pacific Hotel, so I'm very excited to go out there and review it for you guys to see if it's even worth it. Now, for those of you guys who aren't in the know, the Pan Pacific Hotel is the hotel that that sits literally right above the cruise terminal in Canada Place. Canada Place is the designated cruise terminal for Vancouver, Canada, so to be staying at the hotel that is literally right above it has a couple of benefits. Number one, you don't have to take an Uber or a taxi to your cruise port that morning. Number two, you can stay in your room later than anyone who might have to take an Uber or a taxi to the terminal. And number three, guys, the Pan Pacific does offer a luggage service where they will come to your room that morning of your embarkation day and they will take your bags down and hand them off to the cruise line for you. So the next time you see your bags, it'll be in your stateroom. So again, guys, we're very excited to check out and review the Pan Pacific Hotel. So if you're looking forward to that video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. So what kind of day activities can you expect to see on that Sunday after we check into the Pan Pacific Hotel? Well, we're basically gonna be repeating what we did on our last Alaskan cruise. We landed in Vancouver on Saturday and the following day, we got up bright and early and we went out and explored Stanley Park. I'm very excited to take Coda over to Stanley Park because I think it is a very beautiful place to go and explore. They have the totem poles there, they have a lighthouse, they have some massive trees in the park which as a Florida boy surprised the heck out of me so I'm very excited to take Coda over there so that way she can experience it for herself. Not only that but they do have an aquarium in Stanley Park as well that we did not know about. Coda did a little bit of research and she discovered it so who knows we may go to the aquarium as well. And then of course after that we're going to be ending off our day going back to Granville Island where I am very excited to be able to explore further maybe eat at a couple more restaurants check out some of the shops and just enjoy the overall atmosphere. On our last Last Alaskan cruise, our time there was very limited at Granville Island, so any more time that I can get over there, I'll be more than happy to take. Alright guys, now let's go ahead and move on to the actual activities and excursions that we have planned for our cruise. Now I'm not going to be going through literally every single activity that we're going to be doing on the ship. We're only going to be covering our pre-booked activities that we had to book ahead of time. So anything like trivia or bingo or whatever shows we're going to be seeing, we're not going to be discussing in this video. So what special activities can you guys expect to see on Embarkation Day? Well, we're doing something that I've personally never done before. We're going to be having Paolo dinner on Embarkation Day on board the Disney Wonder. Now, it's super special for me because I've only experienced Paolo dinner once, and that was on the Disney Fantasy. I absolutely fell in love with the service from Paolo dinner on the Disney Fantasy, so I'm very excited to see what the service is like on an OG ship like the Wonder. It's also going to be Coda's first time experiencing Paolo dinner and my mom, so it's going to be an overall very fun experience. The second day that we have on board the ship is going to be a day at sea, and as of right now, we don't have 
have anything in particular planned, so we're just gonna go ahead and move on to our third day, which in my opinion is the most exciting day. The third day on our Alaskan Disney cruise is going to be Glacier Day. And again, guys, I've said this before, but Glacier Day is going to be the most hectic and most chaotic day of your Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation. So we're gonna be starting things off on the right foot that day, and we're gonna be experiencing Palo Brunch that day. Now, I will say right off the bat that it's not my first choice to have Palo Brunch on this particular day. When we do get on board the ship on Embarkation Day, I am gonna be trying to change it for our last at sea day because I wanna make sure that we get to as many of the characters outdoors as possible before we head out on our excursion for that day. And moving on to that excursion, guys, we are going to be experiencing the Glacier Explorer Tour, which is labeled as DG01 on the Disney Cruise Line website if you are looking to book this experience. Now, what this excursion basically entails is we are going to be hopping off of the Disney Wonder onto a tender boat that is going to take us a lot closer to the glacier than the actual ship does. Now, I've heard from some people on Facebook that every once in a while, the Disney Wonder does not have the ability to get close to the glacier at all. This is where this very popular and quite frankly very expensive excursion comes in handy because sometimes if there are chunks of ice in the water that are just too large for the ship to pass the little tender boat can get past those large chunks of ice and sometimes those guests who book that excursion are going to be the only ones who are going to be able to go see a glacier that day so getting on into the price of this excursion it is a whopping $300 a person for this excursion and for a large family that can add up very quickly it is also one of the most coveted excursions to experience on board an Alaskan Disney Cruise so as soon as you're able to book I highly recommend you do so because this experience will sell out quickly unfortunately on our last Alaskan cruise we had this excursion bur burked wow unfortunately on our last Alaskan Disney Cruise we had this excursion booked and it got canceled unfortunately due to some problems with the tender boats that they had so I'm very excited to experience it this time around hopefully Moving on over to Skagway, our first Alaskan port of call, we are actually going to be doing something very different this time around. On our last Alaskan cruise, we actually hopped on board the White Pass Scenic Railway, and that excursion was $150 a person. Now, while I thoroughly enjoyed our experience on the White Pass Scenic Railway, it was about a three and a half to four hour excursion minus the train breakdowns that we had. Yeah, that was a fun time. Go back on the channel and look up that video. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> So minus the train breakdowns, it was actually a very enjoyable experience. We had some beautiful weather and we got some great views of the mountains as we headed up to the White Pass Summit. But our biggest complaint from that excursion is that we never had the opportunity to actually get off the train and explore any of the surrounding area. We just wish that maybe the train would have stopped at the summit. We could have gotten off and did a little bit of exploring for 20, 30 minutes, hopped back on the train and headed back down. For us, that would have made the experience a heck of a lot more worth it. So with that price point in mind for the White Pass Scenic Railway, we decided to take that money and put it towards a rental car. So we decided to go online and we booked a rental car through Affordable Car Rentals in Skagway, Alaska. And we're gonna be renting a car and we are going to be driving down the Klondike Highway. Now this experience is going to take up the majority of our day and it only cost us $300 for the car for the day. So if you really think about it, between the three of us, we are saving about $150 just by two people putting their money together into the car. Again, this is an experience that I've never done before, so I'm very excited to review the affordable car rental service in Skagway, Alaska, and let you guys know whether or not it's worth your money. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be driving along the Klondike Highway, and we're gonna be able to stop and go at our own pace, stopping at several notable locations, such as Emerald Lake, there's a suspension bridge over there, and I know that there's a few spots Spots along the way where we're possibly able to play with some husky puppies and we also have an opportunity to stop at car cross desert which i think to my knowledge is one of the world's smallest deserts as well that's only a few of the notable places that we're going to be stopping along the way so in my opinion skagway is going to be one of the most exciting days along with the glacier day moving on to our second port of call of juno alaska we're also going to be doing something very different at this point of call compared to what we did on our last cruise we're actually going to be visiting mendenhall glacier and we're going to be doing the hike down to Nugget Falls. Now, again, this is not an excursion that we booked through Disney. However, it is an excursion that you could book through Disney if you really wanted to. The reason why we're not booking it
it through Disney is because it is significantly cheaper to book it third party. On the Disney Cruise Line website, you can book a Mendenhall Glacier excursion for I think it was $65 or $69. I can't remember the exact price. But if we go to the Juno Tours website and we book an excursion through them, it's only $45 a person. So it saves us a bit of money and we aren't on as big of a time crunch as we would be if we were doing it through Disney. Because I think with Disney, you have a set time limit where you have to be back on the shuttle to get back to the ship on time. But booking it through Juno Tours, we have a lot more time to ourselves to actually explore the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center and make the hike down to Nugget Falls and make the hike back. There are going to be shuttle buses cycling throughout the day that go to Mendenhall Glacier and back to the port of Juneau, so we figured it was a no-brainer to take the cheaper option and have more time to experience things on our own. And last but not least, guys, we make our way over to Catch Can. Now, if you remember on our last Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation, we actually did the Great American Lumberjack Show. Now, while I did enjoy the show, I said in my last Alaska video that eh, it's kind of a one-and-done type deal for me. So I wanted to make sure that we did something different when we went to Catch Can this time around. So we have the Wilderness Exploration and Crab Feast excursion booked through Disney Cruise Line. This is labeled as KE31 if you're looking to book it on the Disney Cruise Line website. Now I know some of my other excursions were booked third party, so why didn't I book this one third party? Well, I tried to book a third party, but the third party website was actually the same exact price as what Disney Cruise Line offered. So I figured why not just book it through Disney and we have the added guarantee that if for whatever reason something goes wrong on this excursion, the ship will wait for us. Now what this excursion entails is we're going to be heading on over to the George Inlet Lodge where we're going to be hopping on a boat and we're going to be getting a tour of the fjord, getting a look at some of the wildlife, getting some of the history of the area, and getting some knowledge on the crab fishing industry out there. Following that boat tour, we're going to head on back over to the lodge where we are going to indulge in a crab feast. Now personally guys, this excursion is what I am looking forward to the most because I am a sucker for crab legs. Oh my god, I love crab legs. And if you love crab legs, then you guys know exactly how I feel. These are going to be jumbo crab legs, and we're going to be dipping them in butter. It comes with soda, and I think it comes with alcohol as well. It comes with a blueberry cheesecake dessert, and I am just so excited for this excursion, and I'm excited for Coda to experience it as well. The Wilderness Exploration and Crab Feast excursion isn't exactly the cheapest excursion. It's about $200 per person for adults, so if you guys are wanting to experience this, make sure you guys put that into your budget. But again, guys, I'm excited to experience this for myself and to report back to you guys to let you know whether or not I think it's worth your time and money. And with that, guys, that's about all that we have planned. As of me making this video, things could always change. We could get on board the ship and we could hear about another excursion and we might want to hop on one of those other excursions so things could change. If you guys are wanting to keep up to date with everything that we have going on on our Alaskan cruise, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel as we are going to be posting a lot more vlogs and a lot more videos talking specifically about what these different excursions entail. Not only that guys, but when we get off of this cruise, we are actually extending our vacation a little bit further and we're going to be taking a flight down to California where we're going to be spending a few days going to Disneyland California and going to Universal Studios Hollywood. So make sure you guys are subscribed for those videos as well. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed today's video or if you found any of the information in today's video helpful and any way shape or form it greatly helps us out i want to hear from you guys as well so go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what excursions you guys have personally experienced in alaska or what excursions you want to possibly see us experience in the future i know i said this at the end of my last alaskan adventure and i'm probably going to say it again this time around when we're done but this is not going to be our last time going to alaska i definitely want to experience the beauty of alaska through another cruise line as well maybe royal caribbean next time around who knows so i want to get your excursion recommendations down in the comment section below as well. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.